I'm really so sorry. I need to, I need to wipe you, right? Because you're so filthy and dirty. I need to wipe you up with this cloth. Posting some of the pictures of the darkest days of my life. Yeah. And that was the last conversation we had. Yeah. That next week we talked about never came. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> All right, so as you can see on the screen here, this is going to be the new video series that we've been discussing about. In the video, where we talked about uh, the new things we're going to be challenging um, after we achieve 1 million subscribers. We named this together. This is going to be Shogo's Classroom. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I've made a lot of educational videos in the past, but um, a lot of people have been telling me, Shogo, your videos are educational, they are fun, you know, good to watch and such, but I really am a little bit uncomfortable with all the cuts you have and, you know, all the editing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I was willing to try to make a different video series, but the reason why I couldn't start this new series for a really long time because I was a little bit afraid about my own English. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I, the English is definitely, I did grow up in the US, you know, for six years, but it's not my first language. So I was a little bit afraid of making mistakes and such, but you know, now that we achieved 1 million subscribers, I thought we should challenge something new. So we're going to get started. Yeah. However, the first theme I want you to uh, forgive me, it's going to be something really easy for me to talk about. It is about my own life. <laughs> yes, it is about me. And I know I can hear your voices saying that I really don't care about too much about you. <laughs> I would like to know more about the history and culture, but I really hope you can cooperate and help me out here. This is going to be our first video. Video. All the recording everything is our first time, so um, we're going to be trying this out and start off with the easy topic. But though, although I will be talking about some things that I've never talked about it anywhere else in my podcast and in my videos before, so th there I will be saying some things that are completely new, so I hope you can look forward to that. And as you can see, I separated my life into four biggest turning points. Yeah, and as you can see, number two is something I definitely have not talked about, but it was actually one of the biggest turning points in my life. So I like to talk about that too. And in the end, I will of course talk about how I ended up uh, you doing YouTube and the current dream that I have right now. So I hope you can look forward to that. And by the way, before I get started, um, I have another camera down over here. My channel members are watching me record this live. So if you're interested in having a chat with me and watching me record this live, please uh, join and check out the membership as well. All right. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's start today's video. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's start from the block turning point number one, growing up in the US. So I was born in Kyoto. My mother is actually from Kyoto. So I was born in Kyoto and I grew up in Hiroshima mainly. So middle school and high school were in Hiroshima, but the biggest turning point, if I talk about a turning point, it was absolutely me growing up in the US. I actually spent six years in Michigan from five to 11 years old. And I often get questions asking me like, Shugo, did you study there or why were you there? It was actually due to my father's job. Yes, my grandfather actually started a company and my father carried that on. And when he was still not the president, my father was not the president, he was sent to Michigan for more experience and training. Yeah. And as you know, Kazu was actually in Michigan at that time yeah, too. That's right. And it was for me, a lot of people ask me, so Shogo, how was the experience in the US? Did you like it? How was it? My very simple answer, as you can see on the screen, was an amazing amazing experience yeah I mean I did get a little bit of um slightly slightly being made fun of because I'm, a I'm Asian you know my, my faces and my eyes like this and I had a little bit of that but overall my friends were really really nice to me and I just s simply enjoyed my life so much and I have a really interesting story that um the first email address that I made when I was 10 years old which I don't even use anymore um the password of course because I needed to make an email address account, right? My mother asked me, what would you like your password to be? And I was like, password? I've never even set up a password before in my life. I don't know what to choose. And then she said, she told me like, choose something that you like. And I chose school. My password for my first email address was school. 
Well, the security level was very, very high, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. So, but you can understand how much I enjoyed going to school when I was in the US. Yeah. So for me, you know, all the sleepovers with my friends, the video games that we played, you know, going outside, you know, enjoying nature and all the snow and the freezing temperature and everything. As a child, I completely enjoyed everything. I hardly have any bad memories when I was in the US. Yeah. But from there, going into the turning point number two, my darkest time of my life comes from here. And it's surprising, but it's when I came back to Japan. Yeah. So as you can see in number one here, experienced severe bullying, right? Yeah. So for a long time, my parents, after we spent six years in Michigan, they told me that we're going home to Japan, going home because I am Japanese, right? That's what, that's what I was told my whole life and we were told we're going home. But once we actually went home, there was a very scary haunting experience waiting ahead of me. Yep. And as I've explained in a lot of my previous videos about my experience of bullying, about Japan needs to be normal and you need to be normal in Japan, that kind of story. Basically, I was the student that stood out like crazy. Yeah, because the education in the US and in Japan are just completely different. When I was in Michigan, I don't know what your experience is because you know the US is a very big country, of course. The education might be a little bit different, but when I was in Michigan, when I was in Michigan growing up and in school, I was taught that I was, should always raise my hand. I should always take part in class, you know, have my own opinions, state it, have the courage to state it, and so on and so, so on. But when I was, when I came back to Japan, it was the complete opposite completely the opposite i bet, bet kaza will know about this too yeah, but um in japanese schools the students of course there are occasions where the, the teachers would say please raise your hand you know and if you have something you like to say please say it kind of thing but no one says anything and your grades and everything are just graded by just the test scores that you get and everything else doesn't matter at all but again i went back to japan and the first thing i did when the teacher asked me a question was i know the answer <laughs> And I was the only person in the room doing that. And it's very, very easy to be a subject of bullying if you act like that, right? Yeah. So that was the one of the really, really tragic experiences I had in my life. Yeah. So I actually have a lot of people asking me about my experience of bullying. So if I can share with you some of the actual things that I suffered from was that first of all, um, there were, I experienced more, rather more physical bullying. I think it would be like seven versus three of physical bullying and mental bullying. Yeah, people calling me names, people calling me American because I acted like a person from the US. But I, I, I remember more of the physical bullying. Yeah, there were people like, uh, when I was walking home to school, there was this kid that grabbed me and dragged me along a concrete wall, literally, and my knees would bleed <laughs> like crazy, and I would have to go home like that, right? <laughs> you know, walking with my bleeding knee, and I actually was once stopped by a police in Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, like, what happened to you? Like, what, why are you, like, what, what kind of thing happened to create the situation, right? Yeah, and I was actually once protected by um, the police once and taken to the office and my mother had to pick me up and everything, experienced that. Also, this is a horror, I don't know if you know Kazu, but there was this, I don't know, it's this crazy thing that the kids back at that time did, but it was something called momiji. So it means maple leaves, right? Maple leaves, yeah. But what that really is, is that you have your hand, right? You have your hand, you slap someone very hard, your, the mark of that hand will come out on your skin, right? That was called momiji, the maple leaf. So what the kids would do to me would they, would, they would take off all my clothes, yeah, and they would pin me down on the floor, the group of boys, right? The group of boys would pin me on the floor, and each of them will go around and slap my back one by one and then say, oh, I made the most, you know, I don't know, good looking the clearest, momiji, the clearest, the clearest momiji, momiji, exactly, yeah. exactly, and stuff like that. And it was just a very horrifying experience. Yeah, it was terrible. And the last thing that I remember, this will be the last experience I'll be talking about, was once, it was uh, recess time, it was lunch break around that time, and there was a student, two students basically, two bullies, they were throwing a um, cleaning cloth, basically, that you, you use to clean, you know, wipe the floors, wipe the toilets, or whatever it is. They were throwing that across the room, like, you know, swashing into a ball or something, mm -hmm. and they were throwing that across the room. And once I was sitting on my chair, you know, I don't want to talk with anyone, so I was sitting on my desk, you know, my chair inside the classroom. And then once that dust um, cloth hit my head, 
when they were throwing it. I don't know if that was on purpose, I don't know why, but they throw it towards my head and then the bully came up to me and picked up the doth cloth and said, oh, I'm really so sorry, I need to, I need to wipe you, right? Because you're so filthy and dirty, I need to wipe you up with this cloth, right? And of course, this cloth is used for wiping the floor and the bathrooms and such, and it stinks like crazy. I was a little bit worried about their hands in the first place because they were throwing it, but anyways, yeah, it, that was the last moment. Um, I explained in my previous video where I talked about my bully, uh, experience of bullying, but that was the time when all of my anger exploded. That was the first time I actually punched the boy back. Right now, think of it back now, I know violence is not the right answer to solve anything, but I was just, just exploded. I don't even remember the scene clearly that much, but I remember it very much because it was the incident that shifted my bullying actually completely. And from there on, not too many people started bullying anymore. Yeah, but I still remember that experience as well. Yeah. Basically during um, uh, elementary school and middle school, I hardly had, had any, any friends. And that's not just because of bullying, but because I simply got afraid and scared of talking with anyone. Yeah, so, but I only had just one friend during middle school. Now, I did have more friends, but some of the friends that I am friends with now, I couldn't completely trust them at that time. Sometimes they would hang out with the, with the bullies sometimes, you know, yeah, and th those occasions I won't be able to go and talk to them. So I did have a few other friends, two or three other friends too, that I could call friends, but the best friend at that time in my life. Kazu, I met him in high school, so it's a little bit more in the future, by the way, guys. But in middle school, elementary school, I only had one best friend, and he was actually also bullied, too. So he was the only friend that I had from, um, from elementary school. And in elementary school, during middle school, basically we met each other almost every single day. We always hanged out together. And, you know, the, all the other classmates in my school and such were like, oh, you two are like a set, you know? Whenever you see Shogo, you see this other guy too. Yeah. You know, whenever you whenever you see this guy, you see Shogo, basically, kind of thing. You know. So that's how we just really relied on each other a lot. Um, his family, he lost his mother when he was in the sixth year of elementary school. So that would be like when he was 11, 12 years old. And his father got completely alcoholic, actually. So he stopped going to work. He was just at home drinking all the time and whenever he had an older brother too by the way but whenever he went home his father would always be angry and would be throwing bottles at him yeah glass bottles mm -hmm. at his son yeah and his older brother my best friend's older brother he was five or six years older than him but he was still a high school student at that time right but he had to go to work to support his family. My best friend himself, he was still in middle school, but he was working too to support the family. So he was living a very, very hard life himself. Yeah, and I didn't have to do that, of course. My family was rather okay compared to that, at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, so we definitely relied on each other a lot and I really needed his help too, yeah. But, um, and, and yeah, thanks to him, I, during middle school, I was completely worn out, you know, very, um, should I say, negative, very dark uh, student. I think I will be posting some of the pictures of the darkest days of my life. Yeah. We always laugh at it. If, you, if I'm showing you the pictures on the screen right now, by the way, um, you can see that my eyes are hardly open, right? Mm -hmm. But I need to assure you that I am asked to smile in these pictures. And this is my smile that I had at that time. Yeah, this is me smiling, guys. Yeah, so you can see how hard my life was at that time. Yeah, but anyways, thanks to this best friend, I was able to kind of shift my life to, to the better. Yeah, so for a really long time, I didn't even properly participate in school. I didn't take classes. I didn't want to talk with anyone. I don't even want to see anyone for a long time. But because I met him and we t discussed together, if we give up right now, if we give up our lives here, that means we just lost all the bullies that bullied us, right? So we had a discussion, we said, we are not going to be losing. We are going to be doing something together properly and, well, I don't know, um, get them back in the future, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course, we're adults now, we don't actually want to get anyone back now, but when we were young, that's what we thought, yeah. So that's the reason why I was able to properly study for the exams to go into high school, yeah. And that's the reason why I was able to meet Kazu, yeah, and have a wonderful experience. From high school, by the way, my life completely changed. It was so much fun, yeah. All the teachers I met there, all the friends I met there, the club activities, everything from there was great. Mm -hmm. I have just so many great memories from there. But that was all thanks to my best friend cheering me on that we could live better lives and we can change from there. And my best friend actually wanted to become a mangaka. Mm -hmm. He was actually writing manga, yeah. 
and his pictures was really, really beautiful. It was great, yes. But unfortunately, as I wrote on number three, yeah, once we actually did enter high school, we went to separate high schools, but even after going to separate high schools, we still met each other once once every week, I think. We talked about what we were experiencing in high school and, and, and he showing me his new pictures. Sometimes I would write some storylines and he would write the pictures for me. Yeah, that would suit the characters and such. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun, yeah. But unfortunately, at one point, um, it was, we actually had a fight. He and I had a fight but for the first time in, I don't know, how many years have you been friends at that time? I think it was like five or six years. We had a fight for the first time and we didn't see each other for more than a few weeks. Again, even once we went into high school, we met each other for once a week, right? But for a while, we did not see each other. Yeah. And then I just, by coincidence, saw him walking down the streets. And the fight was something really, really stupid, like some, some fight that kids would do. Yeah, it was nothing that we need to... Uh, what should I say, uh, fuss about too much, but, but we had a fight and we didn't see each other for a few weeks and just found him on the streets and when I went to him and I said I'm sorry and he said I'm sorry too and when we, we were apart from each other, yeah, he actually found a sensei, a shisho, a basically his uh, instructor who was a, a professional manga at that point and he actually went there to become an apprentice. Yeah, he went there for like a week every single day going to plead, please make me your apprentice. And every time it would be declined, but he went back, it was got declined. And when he was afar away from me, yeah, he basically thought I really need to make my life even better, you know, so I can talk with Shogo with a little bit more pride. Um, the thing was, I went to a high school that was a little bit, in terms of grades, it was a little bit higher than his. Yeah. So he was always feeling that um, even though we started at the same point, I'm not working as hard enough as Shogo, you know. So that's the reason why he wanted to become an apprentice of the mangaka and he wanted to work harder. Yes. So that day I met him on the streets just by once. We, we apologized to each other and we said, yeah, how about yeah, how about Shogo, you know, how about we hang out? You know, it's, it's been a while. How about we hang out this weekend? It'd be great if we can go outside and play or something. And I was like, you know what? I'm sorry. I said to my best friend, I'm sorry. I actually have an exam uh, on that weekend, uh, the next week, I think. So that weekend, I need to do a little bit of studying. So maybe next week, maybe next week, I will be able to hang out with each other. And then he said, okay, that's, that's, okay, that's completely fine. Of course, I actually have some plans to go to swim in the ocean actually, because it's almost about to be summertime and the ocean, oceans are opening up for swimming. So I actually have some plans to go there with my friends. And that was the last conversation we had. Yeah, that next week we talked about never came. Yeah, so what happened, we actually, no one knows what actually exactly happened to him, but he actually drowned inside the ocean and he died when he was 16 years old. So that is more than 12, 11 years ago. Yeah, it was the most tragic experience in my life, definitely. Um, his brother, his older brother I mentioned earlier, gave me a phone call and uh, it was a rainy night. Yeah, I remember him with trembling voices. As he, as he was crying, he explained to me what happened. And uh, I called him back three times after the call. I, I, you know, hung up the call and I called his older brother again. Is this some kind of joke? and hung up again. Of course, he tells, no, this is not a joke, Shogo. I'm really sorry. And I hung up again. And then I called him again saying, no, this must be a joke, you know. And we, I just kept on going like that over and over. And I just remember that night so much, yeah. And I remember going to the funeral and seeing his face, you know, you know, completely, of course, you know, there is no blood running in his body anymore, completely pale inside the coffin. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah, it was a really, really big experience for me. Of course, I mean, you probably have experienced losing someone in your life too, but losing someone you really, really trusted and loved when you were 16 years old and receiving a letter from his family saying that, um, an invitation basically to the funeral, right? Yeah, and saying the person has the name of my best friend and the year he died. And it says 16. 16 years old is way too young, right? And it was just a really, really big experience for me that really changed my life that I need to live for his life too. Yeah, I'm not just living my own life, but I'm living for someone else's life too because he had a very, very big dream of becoming a super famous shonen jump mangaka. <laughs> yeah, he loved jump, of course, we all do, right? And he was a big fan himself and his dream was to have his manga on jump. Yes, he had a really big dream, right? Now his dream needed to be mine too, of course. I'm not a mangaka, but his energy that he had 
towards this dream. I need to carry that on, I felt. And from there, my life completely changed. And that's the reason why, that's one of the reasons why I always really want to keep on fighting and improve myself, you know, uh, dream bigger and things like that. This turning point number two was one of the biggest things that happened to my life. Yeah. At that timing, I was actually working at a restaurant called Shishin Samurai Restaurant, but finally, I was able to find my purpose when I started working at Shishin Samurai Restaurant. What should I say? Despair for me at that timing, yeah. And a lot of people always say that Japan is a country, is a people who really doesn't like change, but that is not true. We need someone, and that is going to be us. That is going to be Team Last Ask Shogun, and that is our dream.